triple check and you don't have any balls back there. Oh, Olive. Alrighty, hi guys. Um, I'm here with Mr. Loki. Uh, today I'm gonna kind of use the target cue we've been working on to introduce some spooky stuff to Loki. Um, he's a little bit of a skittish kind of guy. Um, and I imagine, you know, from what I've seen on the ground, I, I wouldn't really want to start him under saddle until I get him a little more confident about things that he doesn't know about um, that startle him so that um, I don't get up on top of him and, yes, good boy. I don't get up on top of him and he gets spooked and then does a little spin or anything like that. We want to kind of prepare him um, to be as confident as possible so that we don't start with any spills or anything like that. Um, and so I've got just very simple plastic bag tied on the end of the whip here. He's already uh, checked it out um, since it makes a little noise and um, moves when he breathes on it. It's a little bit spooky to him. So what I'm going to do is I'm ultimately just going to offer it for him to investigate, click treat for that, um, which is pretty much the same thing as this target um, behavior that we've, uh, we've learned already. So, and I've also got the uh, feed bin here because uh, we don't want Mr. Loki to get muggy or anything like that. Right, mister? All right. Go back up just a little bit. Oh boy. Very nice. Bad boy. And so I'm going to allow it to be, I'm not going to, like, I don't like to coddle that much. I like to make things as digestible as possible, but, like, I'm not going to slowly move the bag over so it doesn't make any crinkling noises. I'm going to let it kind of get his attention. Bad boy. And you can see him checking it out there as he, it's over there. Over here. Good boy. You can see him checking it out as he kind of tilts his head this way. He's getting a better look at it. He's focusing in on it a little bit. Very nice. So I want to make sure I get it in both eyes as well. So I'm going to get on the other side. Good boy. <laughs> Guinness thinks it's quite interesting as well. Good boy. Good. And so as we move along, I'm going to put it in different, different spots. Um, I'm going to kind of get closer and closer to his body. As you can see, he's still not super comfortable with it. Um, he's interested in it. He's willing to go explore it. But if I were to go and touch it to him right now, he'd definitely jump out of the way and be all squirrely. So we're not going to move that fast quite yet. So I'm going to put it on different areas. Now it's down low to the ground. Good boy. So you can see it in different positioning. So it's not the same thing every single time. It looks a little bit different. Um, horses don't have as good of object permanence as we do. And so sometimes the same object in a different 
um, light or a, a different perspective of it can look like something completely different and completely weird and spooky, even if we've seen it before. So I want to make sure that I, that one was really nice. He stepped towards it, even as I was still livening the bag and making it kind of spooky to look at, which is nice. Next one, I'm going to see if I can bring it above his head, out of his vision. Oh, look at you. Over here. This guy is awesome. I love working with these youngsters. He's so curious and uh, eager to learn. So now I'm going to see if I can touch one of his feet with it. Good. I'll bring it in his eyesight so he can target it once he gets his attention back. I've got to lick that ball clean. Very nice. And so especially when they're so young and so inquisitive and they bounce back so quickly from these things, um, especially when I'm working with a horse that doesn't seem to have any, you know, like deep-seated trauma or issues processing certain things or perceptions or anything like that. I uh, occasionally kind of want to startle them a little bit so that they can be brought up and then bring back down. And um, they kind of have that continual um, understanding. Oh, Miss Olive. They have that continual understanding that, oh, things might be spooky, but I can still recover. It's not that big of a deal. So very nice. One thing that I think is really important when we're using positive reinforcement is that we aren't just like bribing with treats and especially in these scary moments when you're trying to like get control of your horse because they're spooking or the vet is coming and they hate the vet or something like that. Instead of saying, please, please, please stay still, be good. I'll shove as many treats in your mouth as possible. Instead, I want to um, reward the actual self-control. I want it to feel good to them, for them to create these self-soothing techniques um, and to be able to be pushed over the edge a little bit. Good boy, and then figure it out. Awesome. And so actually that right there, getting off topic, but that's how my brain works, I bounce back around. Actually, that is the first time that I got a clean backup from him. I've been trying to get him to yield to pressure. We've been working in the stall a lot. We've worked outside on our walks and in the indoor a little bit, yielding to pressure. And he's very good at yielding the shoulders left and right. I haven't asked for the backup yet. Look at him. He's even offering to go and seek out the trash bag now. <laughs> yeah, just like that. So I'm looking for just a direct backup. Very nice. And so that's another case, another situation where we're kind of training two things at once here, especially when he kind of gets a little bit over threshold quickly with, with pressure being put on the body. Um, he's gotten a lot better in the few weeks that he's been here. At first, I couldn't really touch him with anything on the side without him jumping over. And now he uh, actually stops and thinks about what that pressure means. Um, but I couldn't get him to back up straight. Um, he would just kind of yield his shoulder, choose a direction, and make space that way. And so it's nice to see that through this exercise, he's actually offered that. And now I know that this is an easier way that I can ask him and kind of establish that behavior. Because it's not that he's, you know, giving me the wrong answer on purpose. He just doesn't know what that means yet. See, so he's just a little bit. So I'm going to stay right here. He's tensing a little bit. He's looking at it. Good. And so as we expand our horse's threshold, it's not going to be a linear path upward. Sometimes it's going to, okay, now I can handle this, now I can handle this, and I'm going to start um, 
maybe tapering off how much I can permit again. Um, sometimes I get a little bit more sensitive as the uh, training goes on. Sometimes I get a little bit less, um, but it's important to, to not like expect this linear path upward of progression, but instead just see the way that your horse is processing the stimuli because I'm, I'm repeating myself, but um, you know, it's not going to just be progressively better. Sometimes it's going to either going to stick on a part and have to take a little, little longer to process that. So we got two good backups there. And the third time I asked, you're like, oh, it's a little spooky. And now we're playing with the fan. So I'm going to ask for his tension back to see if we can get a nice, gentle. He's thinking. Look at that thinking face. There. Good. Yeah. And so I'm going to wait for some sort of a release here. You can see on his face the processing, what we were just uh, dealing with. And Miss Olive's coming out to show us her beautiful, grumpy face. There we go. Awesome. No, no, no. All right, ran out of space there, but now we're continuing. So, hi there, beautiful. Very nice. All right, we got the thinking face. You know, he's kind of frozen there. He's got an ear on it. He's bringing an eye to it. Very nice. Good boy. And so I'm also teaching him this because his previous owners had told me that um, he was pretty afraid of the saddle. Um, I mentioned before, I'm not sure. I didn't see him be afraid of the saddle. Um, I haven't introduced the saddle to him either yet. So um, being that he's so kind of apprehensive and skittish about a few things, it could just be that um, maybe they were introducing that item too quickly and just the the swiftness of introducing it was scary. Perhaps it was the saddle itself, but um, regardless, long story short, I'm also kind of doing this method here where I'm kind of touching him with it. I'm seeing him get concerned about it and I'm allowing him to kind of go and check it out. So he's got it in his, his right eye now. Good boy. <laughs> Because once we put a saddle on him or anything like that, where it's kind of weird and strange. See how he's freezing here? He's really processing this right now. So we're going to stay right here. Good boy. Good. I want him to be able to turn his head and check it out and kind of see what it's about. Um, and I also want to start establishing to him that when I see that he's kind of in this state where he's heavily processing something and that he needs time or it might be overwhelming, but I'm willing to stop and wait and be patient and let him have the space and the time to figure out what he's figuring out so that it's not as overwhelming as it, it might seem. Very nice. That's another thing too, is that this guy, it's the standard bread in him and it's the three-year-old in him that he's super duper flexible. So he's able to reach all of this stuff with his nice long neck. Can't wait to get some muscle on him. He's quite banana shaped right now. I think that's the standard bread in him. Um, but we're gonna be doing lots of core exercises before we get this guy under saddle so that He's moving correctly and properly, pushing from the hind end, lifting with his abdominals. 
Very nice. So that once we put a rider on him, he's actually physically fit and ready for that rider. Um, because even though he's three years old right now, I, I personally don't think that he's in the physical shape um, to be carrying something. And so we're going to work heavily to build up his muscle on the ground while helping his brain grow before we ask these things of him. I think one of the things that um, if you've started young horses or ridden young horses before, I'm sure you know that they have some balance issues the first time they get somebody on their back. Um, and so I want to make sure that he's balanced himself without somebody on his back before I, you know, add that weight, that burden to him. And right now he's quite unbalanced. He's a lanky three-year-old with a big U neck. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, isn't that right? Isn't it that right? You are so sweet. All right. We've got some good proper nutrition on this guy's feed. Um, here we go. So I'm hoping he'll put on some muscle and weight. There we go. Good boy. Yep, so right there is where he starts to be like, okay, I'm not so sure. We'll come around, we'll check on it. Good boy. Nice one, Dixie. Nice one. All right, we're going to stay right here while he figures it out. And so he's actually mouthing the whip, which is making the bag move. And I'm allowing that. There's, I see way too many horses that spook themselves on their own actions. Yes, sir. Hi. And so if he can learn that him fidgeting with stuff makes stuff happen, then it won't be as surprising later on. Very nice. Awesome. Oh, now it's not so scary, isn't it? There, now it's scary because it's another eye, right? Let's get another eye. We see it. And so again, and this, I, I don't really like to call it desensitizing because I don't like to expose my horses. Um, to stimuli so quickly and um, I don't, I don't like to desensitize in the sense that I'm getting the horse to not respond to something. Um, I like to help the horse digest it. Um, by exposing them to something that brings them slightly out to the top of their threshold, um, but they are able to process it um, and it not be a big deal. Um, yeah. Good boy. Anyways, I lost my original thought there. What does that mean? Thinking. <gasps> Good. Very nice. Two clean backup steps. Sir. Sir. No, we can't bite on her halter. <laughs> Whew.
There we go. Look at that. Good boy. That's not too bad, is it? Good. All right. Other side. Good boy. Good. Very nice. Good. That was perfect. That was a really good backup. Ah, ah, ah. Not going to electrocute ourselves today. No, sir. All right, so now I'm going to the other side of the horse. We've lost interest in our treats, but that's okay. We'll keep going. But that's not the focus of this. This is just the icing on the cake. Good boy. Whenever I go to the other side, we're starting over like it's new. I'm not going to assume that since you're so good on the other side, it's going to be super easy on this side. Because again, with the object permanence thing, see, he's thinking so much about it right here. Look at that eye. I don't know if you guys can see that. He's really thinking about this. So it's important when our horses are staying still like this that he's not, you know, dead inside he's not you know the freezing because he's he's bored he's this is him processing and i've got to give him the time and space to process that and not get impatient about it good boy <laughs> oh yeah So I'm going in and out of his blind spot now. Yeah. Oh, good boy. Look at that eye. He's thinking about this a lot. So he's staying in the same place as I move around. Which is why I'm okay with it. Good boy. Like now he's softening his neck a little bit. He's got his ears on it. I like to really rub him in the... Uh, no-no zone as well so that we know if we have any tendency to kick out to something that's uncomfortable back there but he doesn't seem to in the back of the butt and the other blind spot very nice my good sir <laughs> then i don't shy away from Kind of rubbing on their face a little bit. I don't want a head shy horse. It's important to be gentle up there, but I want to make sure that he's okay. Some weird stuff near his face sometimes. Good. Oh. Yeah, we're thinking about it. This is different. Going in one eye, into the other eye. One eye, other eye. Awesome, Loki, very nice. All right, sir. All right, well, that was a plastic bag with Loki. There. Yeah. Awesome. There's my looking shoe. That's what I've been looking for. Awesome. And that's why I do like to do the positive reinforcement with um, this, like, desensitization thing. Um, not only is it, you know, 
creating big positive dopamine releases, serotonin releases after conquering this uh, close to threshold anxiety or fear, which is creating those good neural pathways of uh, feeling rewarded for facing something and being brave because that's something that I want to reinforce and instill in my horse. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's a lady peeing. That's a lady peeing. Oh, look at you. Aren't you just the sweetest? Okay. All right, mister. All right, so I figured let's just play around and see if we can get some yielding done here. So we've done this with the target stick, with the ball. And uh, so now, good boy, we got a nice back up. Very nice. Good. Awesome. So now we're going to ask this direction. Good. Very nice. Awesome. So Loki's been here, I think, about 10 days or so. And when he first arrived, he was quite a bit to handle. He was really nice and sweet. Um, and he, he, he didn't mean to do anything wrong or anything like that, but he just he handled like a bad dog. <laughs> and so he just like pull on the lead rope and kind of you didn't know where your space was and where his space was. So if he got nervous, which was pretty much all the time as a three-year-old settling in in a new space, very nice. He would just kind of... Um, you know, bump you with his shoulder and get into your space. God, boy. And so now we've been kind of discussing what it means to yield to pressure and what we should do with pressure. Um, because before when I would try to get him to yield to pressure, whether it was with the end of the lead rope with the target stick with a little stick like this, um, he would just kind of go into it if he was over, over his threshold. Um, and so, what you thinking about, bud? Yeah? We've got something processing here. I'm going to give him a little more slack so he can process this. But, um, I'm pleasantly surprised with this guy. He's super duper smart. Um, I, I think he's going to be pretty, pretty simple to start under saddle. And I'm really excited to, um, offer this opportunity to people who want to learn to start youngsters under saddle because he's he's really awesome isn't that right very nice Very nice. Awesome. Very nice. Awesome, Loki. Really good. Really good. Always make sure to rub on here because these things are tools and they help me communicate what I'm trying to say. They don't necessarily mean one thing or the other. They are an extension of my body. And so I want to make sure that this isn't just the yielding or the chasing stick to Mr. Loki. And it's an extension of my arm. An extension of my arm can also give pats, and we're enjoying this quite a bit. We've got 
Oh, yeah. There we go. Good man. Good man. This guy really likes being groomed, too. I like to rub over the spots that I might be tapping them to ask them something so they, they know the difference. And this also makes them kind of pay a little bit more attention, especially with these youngsters that are pretty smart. They can kind of get ahead of you and be like, oh, I already know what you're going to ask. And if I stop every once in a while and give them a little groom with the stick, it doesn't always mean yield. Very nice. There we go, buddy. Awesome. And so now we're going to see what this stick means when we apply it to our bum. So I'll try to get Loki at a little bit of angle here because we're in the aisle way, so we won't be able to see too much. Kind of just block his head here. There. There. Oh, thank, thank you, Miss Dixie. How you feeling, girl? All righty. So just a little shift in the right direction, I'm going to release. Yep, we're figuring it out. We're thinking about it. Oh, she's here. Yep. There we go. We're going to stay right here. And so I have him now in a place where he doesn't really have an option. So we're just going to wait for that release. We're going to reset up. Because when he moved forward... He moved a little bit laterally, and so he didn't have much space to move over into the wall. So we'll try the other side. But there you can see a little bit where he starts to get a little panicky to the pressure. So he's a little nervous now, so I'm going to rub him. There we go. So it's important as we're going to kind of check in with your horse, see how they're feeling about it. Because if I were to go immediately back to asking him again, probably wouldn't be setting him up for success. Probably get a little overwhelmed again, and then we'd run through the pressure, and then he'd do the answer wrong, or he'd give me the wrong answer, which I wouldn't punish him for or anything, but we're trying to get him to do the right answer because we're teaching him something new. So if I see that he's a little tense from that interaction where he got a little confused, there we go. Nice. There it is. All right. Now I ask him. Pointing him on the hip. Very light. Watching his eye and his facial expression. He's thinking. And he's weighing his options. He's figuring it out. I can tell this because he's tensing his neck. He's letting it go. He's tensing his neck. He's letting it go. I'm just going to stay with him. Because he's still thinking. See that? He's thinking. Staying with him. Staying with him. Waiting. Yep. Bracing so he doesn't come forward. It's all right. Almost there. I can see him thinking about shifting his weight. I know, buddy. There. Right there. And so, see, I'm holding him in the front because I don't want him to move in the front too much. It doesn't have to be perfect this time. We're still learning. So anything in the direction that I'm looking for is going to get a reward by release. But it's these first times that are really, really important here, um, especially since he's a little reactive when we escalate too fast um, or don't give him enough time to process. So there we go. So once again, I'm going to rub him because see there, we're a little bit nervous. So we're going to rub until we release this tension we're holding. You can see in the face, the lips are a little bit tight kind of twitching. And so I want to see his top line to loosen up. I want his nuchal ligament to let down his neck here. I'd set, like to see some relaxation in the face and the ears. It's 
I'll stay here. Be nice and patient until we can get that. There, we're moving a little bit. There. There. Almost there. And we're back to finding something. There it is. There it is. The lick and the chew. Especially with these youngsters and with him losing teeth because he's three and he's got several loose teeth in that mouth. I know. He's going to probably look for something to chew on. I'm not going to let him because he can't destroy all of stuff. But it's important to remember that. That he's not just going off being bored. I'm going to destroy stuff. That's him looking to lick and chew process a little bit. Sometimes they like to grab onto something and chew on that instead. There we go. Good. All right. Now, now we can ask for the yield. Remember that this is the side where we had a little bit of trouble with. And already our threshold is much smaller on this side. I'm going to go nice and gentle with them. Might even bend his head a little bit this way to get him to swing his butt out. Perfect. Right there. Good man. Good man. And so to kind of further go through the process there, I don't know how well you can see on the camera, but he started to think about going into the pressure. But I knew that if I escalated the pressure, he's going to go forward and through me, which is even worse of an offense than he did of just lightly thinking about going through the pressure. So instead of correcting and increasing to get a response out of him that I want or to punish the response that he gave that I didn't have, instead of that, I'm going to say, okay, how can I set him up for success? Because he's clearly struggling, right? He's not doing this on purpose. He's not giving the wrong answer on purpose. I can set him up for success by slightly bending his neck this way because that gives his body further inclination to swing his butt out that way, therefore giving me the right answer. And so those are kind of an example of um, how I would choose to respond to a certain thing. Whereas with maybe with an older horse who is educated, who knows that they are supposed to yield to pressure and chooses to go into pressure, then I might escalate ever so slightly to get that yield and then immediately release as to as to make sure to not reinforce that. Yeah. Good boy. I really like how when he gets too mouthy um, and I'm not paying attention so I don't tell him to go off, but then I, you know, tell him to give me some space. He actually does really respect it quite nicely, which I appreciate. All right. So we're starting to lean, we're starting to think, I'm gonna stay with him. I'm gonna brace in front so he can't go forward. There we go, very nice. So I had to brace quite a bit. As you can see, he wants to go forward. I know, there we go. But again, we're gonna deal with semantics later. Right now, we just want him to yield to some sort of pressure, right? Right? Yeah. What you looking at out there, mister? All right. So he's much more calm on this side now. We've had a few correct answers. There. Very nice. Good boy. All right. That was awesome, really willing, um, huge improvement from the first ask on each side. And so I'm gonna call that that with Mr. Loki. I'm gonna put him away. Um, today was probably our longest training session that we've had so far, probably around 45 minutes. Um, I like to keep training sessions really nice and short and sweet with these youngsters. They digest it a lot better and more effectively when I keep them short, yes, sir. Um, but Loki was just asking to do more today, so I obliged him. He was enjoying hanging out and learning some stuff. So I said I was going to put him away, and then he said, let's do more. So I said, all right, we can do more. Oh, that's very kind of you to give me a little nuzzle. All right, Loki. 
Let's go to bed. <clears throat>